Hi and welcome to Yum Paleo. You're back here with Andrew today and what we're going to be making is um, a really delicious meat, uh, a really delicious meal um, with lamb shanks. So um, it's quite interesting, my grandmother always used to say to me these are the sorts of things you'd feed to your cat or your dog. Um, but with modern cooking nowadays, um, these cuts of meat are um, they're a slow cooking meat, but they're incredibly delicious and incredibly flavoursome. So uh, they're enjoying a little bit of a renaissance in modern cooking. Anyway, so what we're going to be doing is we're going to be slow cooking these um, in a cast iron dish and we're going to be putting this in the oven here. So what I'm doing is I've just got this on bake and I've just preheated this to around 150 degrees Celsius, which is around 300 degrees Fahrenheit. So anyway, what we're going to do is just start putting a few other things uh, into this casserole dish to add into it and help infuse some really delicious flavours. So the first thing I've got here um, is I have three um, brown onions. So I've just peeled them and I'm just going to chop them into chunks like so. Now I'm doing this dish um, for four people, um, I have four uh, lamb shanks here, but obviously you can add or reduce that amount um, if you're cooking this for guests or whatever, so add or subtract as you see fit. The only thing you may want to consider, of course, is how you'll fit them in a dish, because they're quite meaty chunks, especially these ones that I picked up from my local butcher. Obviously, if you've got six or eight of these, if you're having it for a lot more people, um, or if you're having two each, uh, which you may want to do if you're especially hungry. Um, however, for this, in terms of portion control, um, I would be recommending we have just one each. Um, so obviously, you're going to want a bigger dish. So bear that in mind before you go throwing everything in. Just size out what your shanks look like before you throw them in. Now, trying not to cry here, just chopped up those three onions. And I'm just going to throw them into here. And then I've got some cloves of garlic here as well. So I'm just topping and tailing these first before I squash them. Just getting the root, the sort of the hard rooty bit off and the tip off that has all those sort of fibrous bits of extra skin. Okay, so with this, just going to peel those bits off, and it makes it a lot easier to peel them when you've sort of flattened and cracked them a wee bit with your knife. So what I'm going to do now, before I throw um, those other bits and pieces in, um, what I'm, I'm just, I want to brown those uh, lamb shanks off a little bit. And the way I'm going to do that is throw them into a pan here. Uh, just with a little bit of oil. And so that's just going to enable me just to brown the meat off a little bit. Just to seal the meat so it doesn't go too stewy. And it also helps just caramelise some of that flavour as well. So I'm just going to whip that lid off there. Find where I put my oil. And I'm just going to slosh a little bit of oil into there. Bring these lamb shanks over. And I'm just going to do two at a time. And we're just going to cover them in oil a little bit. So I'm going to grab some tongs. Actually, I might just throw a little handful just a small handful of that onion from the casserole dish just back into here just to give it a little bit of flavour but I can leave the rest of the onion in the bottom of that dish so we're not really wanting to cook the um, the shanks too much we're just looking at browning them off a little bit which is basically what you do with uh, casserole meat anyway Especially if you're doing like a beef casserole or something, you might uh, toss it in a little bit of coconut flour, a um, little bit of uh, salt and a little bit of pepper, just to um, 
brown it off. So while we're doing that, I'm just going to chop up. So I've just got that garlic done, and I'm just going to ease that garlic into there too. And of course, once those shanks are all browned off, what we're going to do is um, throw all of this mixture back into the casserole dish. Just ease that temperature back a little bit. So while we're doing that, I'm just going to quarter um, some button mushrooms here. And I've got about 20 of them. Um, so I'm just going to see how that goes and how everything's going to fit in there. I'm hoping to use 20, but if it fills it up too much by the time I've got everything else in, I might just take some of them out. So I won't throw all of them in, but let's just see. It's kind of just experimentation in terms of seeing how everything's going to fit in here sometimes. So I've got about 12 mushrooms chopped here so far. So I think I'm just going to stop at 12 for now and see how we go. Okay, they're actually browning really nicely. I'm generally quite happy with those, so I'm going to take those out and throw them into the pan there and just take some of that onion out, not all of it. Just going to put a little bit more oil back in that pan. And we're just going to pop those other two in there and brown them off at the same time. So while we're doing that, I'm just going to start on just chopping some tomatoes as well. So um, I'm just going to want to chop them into chunks because basically these are going to cook down. Um, now you can use a can of tomatoes if you want. However, if you've got fresh tomatoes on hand and we happen to be in tomato season here in New Zealand. Um, so I'm just using four large tomatoes and I'm just gonna just roughly chop them. Now it's a really simple recipe. There's not a lot that's going in it really. Um, not a lot of preparation in terms of uh, chopping lots of vegetables. But we're gonna actually serve this on a sweet potato mash. Um, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a little bit of um, coconut uh, milk through the kumara just to help with giving it a really nice uh, creamy consistency, nice creamy texture. And then I'm going to add a little bit of spring onion to that mash as well. Just to give it something a little bit different. So let's just see... No, give them a little bit longer. They won't need too much more though. Now I don't want to go throwing all this stuff in to the dish first because I want to make sure that I've got my lamb shanks in there um, before I throw everything else on top. In fact they look good to me so I'm turning those off and they're going to go in there now as well. So there's number three, there's number four. Pop a bit of that oil and the leftover garlic and a little bit of onion there into there. So that's great. Now what we're going to do is we're going to pop in the four chopped tomatoes and just sort of heave that over the top. And we're also going to just squeeze in those mushrooms. Certainly, we don't want more than 12 from what I can see. Now, where did I put my little... Now, bear in mind with this tomato, it's taking up a lot of room, but the thing with tomato, when you start to cook it, same with your mushrooms, is it cooks down really quickly. So now we need some moisture to put in there. So what we're going to do is we're going to put in about a cup of chicken stock. I've got some left over from when I made some soup the other day. Um, had a leftover roast chicken, so I just boiled 
up the bones, what was left of it, the carcass, and made my own soup. Now I'm also going to put in some red wine here. Now, jury's still out in terms of red wine and how you use it with paleo cooking, so just a warning of those of you pure paleo people don't want to put the red wine in and you don't have to, but I'm putting a cup of red wine in there as well, which is going to be fantastic. So from there, I'm also going to put in uh, some tomato paste. Um, I've just got one of those little squeezy things. It's kind of like toothpaste, really. Um, but all it is is it's just concentrated tomato because I just want some concentrated uh, flavour in there as well as our normal tomatoes. So I'm just going to squeeze that over. Okay, so... Now I'm going to throw in some rosemary. And the rosemary, what we're going to do is you just get one of these sprigs and you just run it the opposite way and that will pull the leaves off. So then you've got your sticky bit but you've got all your leaves in the other hand and we're just going to sprinkle that just roughly with your fingers over the top and just pull those other little bits off as well get to the end of that and just strip it. it. Smells delicious when you do this. Yeah, I think I want a wee bit more moisture. And oh no actually we're pretty good for moisture there. I was just looking just to check where your levels are and um, moisture levels are kind of about two thirds high um, in that pot. If you go too much higher than that, what's going to happen is it's going to boil over and it's going to make a real mess in the bottom of your oven. So I've got some carrots here as well and I'm just going to chop up a carrot and add that to it. Now, I'm not going to peel the carrots because I think when you peel it, you take a lot of the goodness off it. So this is just a scrubbed carrot. So obviously you've got the dirt and stuff off it, but we're just going to leave the skin on. And that's the really cool thing about paleo cooking is it's just, you know, it can be as fussy or as unfussy as you want to make it. And I think not having to peel the carrots saves me a bit of time as well. But in addition to that, I think it just helps in terms of nutrition because they say a lot of the stuff you're peeling off with your sweet potatoes and your carrots and those sorts of things, you're actually peeling a lot away. away a lot of the goodness. Same thing goes when you're actually boiling vegetables. Um, you're actually boiling a lot of the best stuff away, which is why I'm a huge proponent in saving the vegetable water and making that into stock. Because um, it's just a really nice way of adding something amazing to a soup with your own homemade stock, vegetable stock, chicken stock, beef stock, anything you've got. And if you know anything about it, it's really, really easy to do. So I'm just going to stop there. So that's one and a half carrots. Just grab those. Throw them over the top. There we go. So that's good. And I'm just going to throw in a little bit of thyme. So I've just got some fresh thyme here. And I'm just going to grab a handful of that. Tricky stuff. Actually, I'll just cut it off like that. And what we're going to do is we're just going to run the knife through it. And immediately that's releasing the most divine flavours. I'm just going to throw that over the top as well. Easy peasy. So, lid on like so and in the oven. So in we go and we'll see you in about three hours. So see you in three hours that way we'll start preparing the, uh, the sweet potato mash for that to go on and then we'll be ready to serve the meal. So uh, three hours on 150 celsius or 300 degrees fahrenheit on bake. Really looking forward to that, so see you soon.
Hi and welcome back. So our lamb shanks have been in the oven for about three hours and they're just amazing at this stage. So I'm just going to turn that oven off while I remember to do that. And what I've done in the interim as well is I have just made some sweet potato mash. Just, just really simple. So just um, peeled and um, chopped up a uh, beef three and a half, I've done three and a half um, sweet potatoes there for serving four people. And so I've just put a little bit of uh, coconut milk into that mixture as well. And just for a little bit of interest, I've just put in a little bit of black pepper and I've put in some spring onion as well. So it's just made it a little, a little bit different. Anyway, so let's get back to our lamb shanks. So these are ready to serve. So I'm just going to grab these yummy this is a lamb shank, and I'm just going to grab a little bit of that yummy vegetable mix to go with it. And so from there, I'm also just going to serve up a little bit of that sweet potato mash with it as well. And there we have it. So really hope you enjoy that. It's a really hearty, delicious feed. Really cheap cut of meat. Easy to make. So hope you enjoy that. Look forward to seeing you back here at Yum Paleo for your next delicious paleo recipe. See you next time.